Hello everyone and welcome to the third and last part of the introductory module to network security in Colibri. In this thing we will look at the different potential attackers uh, because it's important to understand who is the enemy really. Um, and uh, we will use three different uh, metrics to characterize the different um, attack groups. One is the motivation, so why are they doing it? The second is the uh, abilities, so what are they actually able to do, how much knowledge do they have, and secondly the resources available, so do they have the resources to make a really a really strong attack, are they, are they quite weak. And we can categorize the different attackers into um, different groups, and of course this is not in any way an absolute science, and there are different groups, there are different definitions, uh, there are some which could be in one group or which could be in another group. So this is just one way of defining it and in the literature you can find that it's done in different ways and you cannot say that one is correct and one is not correct. But we are dividing it into insiders, so people who are for example inside the company, cyber criminals, script killers, grey hats, hacktivists and nation states. And let's go through them uh, one by one. Uh, one thing I will say before going ahead is that it's um, in the end, in order to conclude it in a more visual way than just going through a lot of text, it's really good to have this uh, complex taxonomy where for each of the, um, of the groups you can see how important a threat they are and you can also see what are their main motivations. So for example, in, in the slide here, you will see that you have nation states which are largely driven by revenge and curiosity. You will have some cyber criminals which are largely driven by profit and so on. So, first of all, the insiders. Uh, so, insiders are trusted people with a malicious uh, intent uh, who have privileged access and knowledge of relevant systems. So, that could, for example, be a system administrator um, who, because he is in the organization, he gets the access that he has according to the rules in his organization, but he wants to use the access that he has rightfully in a, in a wrong way. So, insiders are often motivated by revenge. For example, because they disagree with their employers, which can lead to sabotage. So it can also be the guy who gets fired from his job, but before the privileges are removed, he tried to do as much damage as possible, or he will take out a database with custom information that could be useful for him in the future and so on. So um, his motivation is, uh, is often revenge. Um, his abilities. Uh, often he will have extensive knowledge of how the system is operating and the uh, vulnerabilities and he might also have the skills to hide his activities because he has this very good system knowledge. Uh, but often he is working alone uh, so he doesn't have a lot of, of other people to um, that could be resources for him but he will have access to system resources which is also a good resource. Then there are the professional cyber criminals who are in it mainly for the money and they do this because they can earn a lot of money. And often they have a variety of technical skills. Um, they are willing to recruit or hire people with additional competences um, and in that way they can actually, they, they will have abilities because if they don't have it themselves, uh, they will be able to get it uh, in other ways, often through criminal underground networks. Uh, which you will, by the way, hear more about if you follow the basic module. And then there are the resources, and often these people have a lot of resources available in terms of both money, equipment and manpower. So it's, a, it's an important group because they have uh, strong abilities, they have strong resources, and they are mainly financially motivated. Then there is, uh, you can say, the completely opposite, which is in the script killers. So the script killers, uh, if you want to take the, the real visual picture, it's the nerdy guys who are sitting in a basement, uh, downloading scripts from the internet and seeing what harm they can do. So often they will have uh, low skills, they will have a limited understanding of the technical consequences of the, what they do, and they basically do something that someone else did before them. Uh, often they are driven by curiosity, uh, but it can also be from notoriety. Um, they often have low technical competences, so not many abilities and a few resources. And they will most often not be part of a, of a larger network. And it's a kind of cyber criminal that you don't want to be, 
because you will be caught and you will not earn, earn a lot of money, you will just end up in jail. Then there are the grey hats. Um, grey hats are the, you can say, the, the old, uh, old group of, of hackers and they're getting a little bit uh, grey hair. Um, so they are often skillful, but they don't have much of criminal in intent. So usually they would be motivated by a curiosity and they are not really the kind of people who want to do uh, sabotage. They are often specialized, but um, so you can say with respect to abilities, they are specialized, they don't have a wide range of abilities, but they might be part of a network and in that way they can also get the, get the other abilities and be, become quite uh, capable of attacks. Um, and most of them, when it comes to resources, most of them work alone and they exchange knowledge between them. Um, but they have skills and access to equipment, but often work alone. Then there are the hacktivists. The hacktivists have become really famous in the last years. Uh, I think uh, lots of us have heard about Anonymous. Uh, and often they are motivated by ideology and or politics. And they often operate in groups. Uh, with many geographically distributed members, so members all over the world with varying technical skills. Um, so often motivated by ideology or political agendas, um, they have abilities. Um, it's a wide range of people, so there will be beginners and there will be more skilled people, but what is important is that usually they have at least some highly skilled members and therefore I would say that, that in general they, they would have a high abilities. And what we have seen with Anonymous is also that they actually have been able to do a pretty pretty strong attacks. Um, resources vary a lot from group to group, if it's a big group or if it's a very small group. Uh, but the larger groups, such as uh, Anonymous, actually have uh, or seem to have a lot of resources available. Then there are the nation states. Um, and and it's not like you can read in a book how many resources different nation states have available um, but you have seen some attacks in the recent years which you expect to come from for example North Korea um, often it's revenge or it's intelligence or it's uh, political or military gains uh, the abilities they have is that Many nation states actually is highly present in cyberspace and they often employ many skilled experts. And if they really want, they would often have access to, to many resources in terms of money, manpower, knowledge, intelligence, equipment and so on. So it's also a very important player to be aware of. And again, we can plot it into the taxonomy here and see that there are different kinds of attackers with different uh, motivations. And to end this theme, please take the questions available in Moodle. And when you have done it, please also take the final quiz. And this was the end of the introductory part. Thank you very much for following it.